Hi guys, welcome to your third Xcode programming tutorial part one and we're looking at UI labels today. Everything to do with UI lab labels, the properties, changing properties programmatically such as size, the actual text content, adding multi-line text, uh, line breaks, everything to do with UI labels and we'll also briefly cover UI text views but they're pretty similar and interchangeable in terms of the code. So I've just created a single view application iPhone only, you can do iPhone, iPad makes really no difference. I'm not using storyboards, shouldn't make a difference for almost everything we do, but there might be one or two things you'll need to work up. I don't like storyboards as much, I'll go through storyboards in another tutorial though, because I know a lot of you do use them. So uh, I'm going to call this just UI label tutorial, and create that, and I'm just going to get rid of landscape, and hit my deployment target to be 5. Okay, so we're going to start in our XOB today, and we need to be looking into uh, labels. So I'm just going to change the background to be white so the label's more visible, and drag in a label. Uh, it's the one that says label, so it's easy to identify. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at text fields today, in case I forgot to mention that, and how to set the contents of the text field to be the contents of the label. Um, so let's make the label a bit bigger. And I'm going to center it and make the text a bit bigger. And I'm going to add a text field and a button. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the text in the text field. Uh, we're going to make the labels text to match the text that the user typed in the text field when they click go or something. You can change that text, whatever you want. And uh, make the contents of the label. Just make that empty label so you won't be able to see it. Then go into your dual mode editor by clicking this button up in the top right of Xcode and begin by uh, putting two curly brackets after you uh, at interface line and then drag in the text field in between those two as an outlet and we'll call this text field and then we need to drag in the label you won't be able to see it so if you can't find it just drag in the hierarchy object view you can drag it from there and we'll call that label. And finally, we'll grab the button and we'll make an action. So underneath the closing curly brackets, change the connection to be action. And we'll call that go. Then go into your .m file. Go back to the single editor. And let's start coding. So in the go, we need to do... We need to first go... We need to create an NS string. And the NS string, we will... This is a slightly more complex way. You could just do... I'll show you the simple way first, actually. So the simplest way to do this is to go text field dot text equals ah uh, sorry other way around label dot text equals text field dot text. So you're just setting the labels text to equal what the text field is, and then if we run that, you'll see that works well. Run it in the simulator. Shouldn't get any errors. That's one line of code. If you do, I don't know why. And we'll just do hello. And as you can see, the text changes. I could change it to uh, this and go, and it's just going to change the text. So that's the really basic way. If you want a slightly different method, you can create two strings. Oh, just one string, sorry. And a string. And we're going to call this text for label equals text field. Oh, sorry, text field dot text. And then go label dot text equals text for label, and that's it. That's got a couple of advantages and a couple of disadvantages. The advantage is this: if you look at this code, uh, it is two lines of code. It's a bit longer, but it means if you've got five labels and you want to set all of them, it's just that one section r equals text for label. You don't need text field dot text, and they can you might find a few bugs and might use more memory if you do text field dot text. So it's better to just create a string that's equal to the text field text. And if we run that again, it should still work. Uh, hello again. Got yeah. Okay, so it still works. So that's very basic, setting the text of a label. If you just want to set the text to be um, a certain piece of text, as you would have guessed, it is label.text equals at talking mark, hello, if you want it to be hello, and talking mark, close talking mark, and semicolon. And that's just saying the label text equals uh, whatever is in the talking marks. Talking marks just indicate that it's a string. 
You can't put uh, double talking marks inside double talking marks, but you can with a special syntax, so don't worry about it. If you want to do talking marks within, uh, if you want to set the labels text to have talking marks in it, just do a single talking mark. You can't do the double. Because you'll get errors, because it'll think it's closed the string. And the at sign just tells Xcode that it's a string. And if we run that again, it's just going to uh, set, when I press go, the labels text to be hello. So that's uh, fairly basic. And yeah. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be looking in uh, text fields and adding new lines into text fields. So we can delete all of these uh, strings. And we're just going to add a text field in. Um, let's not make it the whole screen. And I'm just going to change the views background color to be black. So you can see where the text field starts and ends more easily. And just leave that random gibberish text in the text field for now. And we'll just add a button. I shouldn't have deleted the one before. So just right click on files, owner, and drag go to button. And touch up inside. Then open up your split editor again. Dual editor, split editor, whatever you want to call it. And in uh, between the curly brackets, create a new outlet and we're going to call it text and connect. Um, go back to your.m, delete the contents of the go method because we're going to change that and we're going to make it text. I'm just going to do the single editor. Text dot text. So we're setting the text. Um, text fields text, so I probably shouldn't have called it text, it should still work, but it just makes it a bit more complex. But text, which is our text box, text field, text, so the text of the text field, equals, and then whatever we want the text to be. So if I just do, hello, my name is 99 cents app development, um, and then I run this, it's just going to say that, so it's exactly like a label in that sense. Uh, if I click the button, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, unlike a button, well, I mean, you can make a multi-line button, but it's almost certain that if you're having a text field, you're going to want it to be more than one line. So let's create another line. And you can't just press enter. That doesn't create a new line, and it'll stuff up Xcode. So if we do uh, backslash n, and then we type this is a new line, that'll create a new line if we want it. Uh, so it's backslash n. Don't make the mistake of doing a forward slash. The backslash is the one above the return enter key below the delete key on a Mac keyboard. And here you go, you can see there's a new line. You can see there's a space before the new line. That's because we've got uh, backslash n and then space, this is a new line. If we delete that space, it hopefully won't do that. Yeah, there you go. If you want two new lines, just do backslash n again. Don't need a space. Uh, and there you go, you've got two new lines. So that's how you add a new line. One thing you will have noticed is if I go back to the simulator, I can start typing in this text field. Now, you may or may not want that. If you don't want uh, it to be the user to be able to interact with the text field, just untick in the behavior section in the XIB editable. You can do other things too. So if I uh, do H, if I just type, uh, let me type a website address in. And then I run the app. What you're going to see is, oh, sorry, I didn't press enter. Let me, uh, You'll notice that there's a link there, but if I click on it, nothing happens. So if you wanted to detect links um, and to then take redirect to a website, you know, and have to code that in, it's really easy to do. In the detection, you just go links, um, and then if you run that now, it's going to detect that there's a link there, and if I click on it, it's going to take me to Safari. And then there's also code in a later tutorial that I'll show you that'll mean whenever a link's detected, it's actually going to open within your app rather than taking to Safari. If you've got an address you want to detect and open up maps, tick addresses, events, that'll open up calendar, phone number, it'll make a phone call. So you can t take all of that. Um, let's set editable enabled again, and I can change the type of keyboard. So as you'll see when I run this now, if I, if I start typing, um, it's just a standard number keyboard with a return key. I might want it to be a, certain I might want it to be a number pad. And if I run it now, there's going to be number pads, so I won't be able to type text. Good for passwords, maybe. Uh, or calculator. If I go back to a default keyboard, I can make the return key go, and that'll be blue then. So if I've got, you know, a game, and you just entered a username, and then you want to start playing, you can click go. And then in a later tutorial, I'll show you how to detect when, um, when the user presses that go button, and then do a method inside that. So that's the basics of text field. And 
in part four of this series i will show you how to detect the return key pressed i'm looking forward to hearing any of your thoughts send them through or write a comment on this video be sure to like and subscribe and visit our website 99 appdevelopmentcom for loads more information tutorials uh, find out more about app development. So, look forward to our next tutorial.